in one of the most famous diving locations of the world, a dark history lingers beneath the surface of the water. It's been the place of so many deaths that it's been named the Diver's Cemetery. This underwater realm harbours a chilling narrative of countless young divers who went in and didn't come back. One of the most famous accidents was that of Yuri Lipsky, and this is his tragic story. Try to convulse and die. And he asked me to recover his son. Yuri Lipsky was a 22-year-old Russian man with an unwavering passion for the deep sea. His love for diving ran as deep as the ocean itself, so much that he had recently gained his diving instructor qualification, and so found himself a fully qualified diving instructor at the tender age of just 22. Despite having explored numerous underwater wonders across the globe, Yuri's heart was captivated by one unique marvel, the mesmerizing blue hole. With its strange allure and untold mysteries lurking beneath the surface, Yuri had always felt drawn to the Blue Hole, and viewed it as a beautiful and unique place in the world. Eager to put his new skills to work, Yuri would head to Egypt to the location of the infamous Blue Hole. The Blue Hole is situated near the coast of Egypt's Sinai Peninsula, a few miles from Dahab, which is the closest town. Just a few metres from the shoreline, the continental shelf quickly gives way to deep oceanic trenches thousands of feet down. The hole itself is a geological formation known as a submarine sinkhole. It's essentially a vertical cave or cavern that formed over thousands of years through a combination of erosion and collapsed limestone, and extends down to around 130 metres. One of the main features inside the hole, and usually the biggest law for divers, is the arch. A massive underwater arch that used to be the entrance to this cave when it was dry long ago. The arch has a formidable reputation of luring divers further and deeper into extremely dangerous situations. The water in the blue hole is usually so clear that it creates an illusion making things seem much closer than they are, causing divers to think that they can swim through the arc when in reality it's completely out of their reach. On top of this, most of the divers are recreational divers who are just using normal oxygen tanks, which can cause multiple life-threatening problems when in high-pressure environments. The site is considered to be the most deadliest diving location in the world due to the high number of fatalities that have occurred over the years, even earning the nickname of the Divers Cemetery. And this title certainly holds true, as the lifeless bodies of some unfortunate divers are still down there. But this dark history only lures in more adventurous people looking to see it for themselves. And especially over the past 15 years, the area around the Blue Hole has gone through significant urbanisation due to the high number of tourists coming to see and dive in the Blue Hole. It was not Yuri's first time in Dahab visiting the Blue Hole. He had been there a year earlier looking to do a deep dive into the Blue Hole. Yuri Levski, yeah? Yuri, actually, I saw him uh, not not the year he died on, I saw him a year before. But during his two day stay, he was unable to find anyone that would take him down with his current qualifications. So Yuri was back again for another two days with unfinished business, and this time he wasn't going to take no for an answer. Yuri began asking everyone he could to assist him in a deep dive into the hole. He would even end up asking local diving legend Tarek Omar, who was probably the most experienced person when it comes to diving in the Blue Hole. Living local for most of his life, Tarek has been diving the hole for more than 20 years and has a deep connection with the Blue Hole. He even holds the record for the deepest dive in the area. Tarek was all too familiar with the young divers who would arrive daily at the Blue Hole asking to dive without the necessary experience. Over the years, Tarek had lost count of how many bodies he had recovered from the seafloor of this popular dive site, but the number would easily be over 100. Each and every one of them were experienced divers, yet all of them underestimating the dangers lurking beneath the seemingly tranquil surface. Tarek had collected so many of the bodies from the depths of the hole, he became known ominously as the Bone Collector. But there were those that were just too deep for even Tarek to be able to safely recover. 
The only reminder that they died here were their names inscribed on one of the many memorial plaques dotted around the site. Tarek completely refused to take Yuri out on such short notice and without the proper experience, knowing full well what happens to even qualified divers in the blue hole. But Yuri wasn't going to take no for an answer, and just 40 minutes later he would find another guide who he'd convinced to take him down into the blue hole. Yuri began putting on his gear and checking his oxygen tank. He secured his camera into an underwater case and went through some final checks before the dive. Yuri was acutely aware of the conditions awaiting him, and all of the pertinent information programmed into his diving computer was able to be viewed at any time. With this crucial piece of equipment, he would know what depth he was ascending to, the amount of air remaining in his tank, and even the amount of time the overall dive should take him. As he entered the water and the camera started rolling, everything seemed to be going well. Still close to the surface, divers could be seen below him coming up to finish their dive. Yuri and his dive buddy signalled the all good, and Yuri began his descent, alone. Because he was a diving instructor, he was confident that he would be fine lower down without a buddy. During the descent, Yuri was so distracted by the camera and likely suffering from minor narcosis that he completely forgot to check his descent rate. Whether he knew it or not, he was plummeting down at an uncontrolled rate, 30 meters every minute, until eventually the dark waters below gave view to the sea floor. Yuri couldn't believe what he was seeing, and frantically began to check his diving computer for the first time since starting the descent. Just a few moments later, Yuri would crash into the seabed, 93 meters down. The average oxygen tank is able to last around 30 to 60 minutes during recreational dives, but these numbers can drop to mere seconds at much lower depths, as the gas molecules become so densely packed together from the pressure of the water that you can use up your remaining air in just a few breaths. But these final breaths are completely toxic, as the high concentration of molecules enters your bloodstream, it causes nitrogen narcosis which is a physiological anaesthetic response that occurs in your brain which can leave divers in a drunk-like, disorientated state, which a lot of the time ends up fatal, especially when you're alone in a dangerous environment. As Yuri felt his dwindling air supply and the foggy confusion of the narcosis, panic began to set in. He desperately tried to inflate his vest, but he was far too deep for this to work especially with all of the heavy diving equipment that was weighing him down even more, and none of it was quick release. Yuri frantically stumbled around on the seabed, and in a last desperate attempt to inflate his vest manually, Yuri removed his regulator and gave the vest his final breaths of air. But this was hopeless, and Yuri would drown, alone, deep down, almost at the bottom of the blue hole. Yuri's father arrived at Dahab the very next day and was in disbelief. He had just been swimming with his son a few days before and now he was gone. Yuri's father asked Tarek Omar if he could retrieve the body of his son. Tarek agreed and told him that he would need two days, the first day to check the location and condition of the body and the second day to retrieve it. So on the second day, Omar along with his dive buddy began their slow descent into the hole. They were both using Trimix, which is exactly what is required for these kinds of deep dives. As it suggests in the name, Trimix is simply a formula of three different gases, oxygen, nitrogen and helium, which when correctly combined allows divers to breathe for longer and reach much deeper without being poisoned by their air supply. Tarek Omar would tie the body of Yuri to some rope, which would get pulled to the surface where Yuri's family would be waiting. Tarek and his buddy resurfaced long after the body had been removed, due to their mandatory decompression stops. There's few places in the world that you can take a couple of steps from the road and fall into an endless chasm of water, but here at Dahab's Blue Hole, that's exactly what it's like. And it's as if Mother Nature herself has created the perfect trap for divers that continues to lure people to their deaths to this very day. Thank you so much for watching, and if you did enjoy the video, please consider subscribing, as I'd really love to reach 1k. But, until the next true disaster, it's goodbye from me.